Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. Today we're going to be piecing this together. Um, I have some fun tricks that we're going to be doing today. Um, one is to add texture to cardstock to make it look more like um, the patch in his um, in his elbow right there. And then for the shoes. And then I want to attempt to add a light bulb for the candle just to have it flickering a little bit. So <laughs> it's gonna be a fun off the mat assembly tutorial. And, um, but before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I appreciate all the support that I can get. Okay, so um, I haven't quite decided if we're gonna piece everything together, like from beginning to end, or if we're just gonna do the specialty parts. But um, let's start with this though, because I do wanna definitely do this which is adding, oops, let's make sure, okay. Adding some texture to the cardstock. So I just put this here just so that we can um, do this on top. So this is the um, same cardstock as this. So you can see from behind, they're the same. I'm actually gonna use my Xyron machine so that I can get this whole piece, this whole piece right here uh, with like a sticky tape basically. And so what that does is then I can add the flock on top and the flock is from Pink and Maine. The color is cashmere. I absolutely love it. I mean, it's so much fun. This works great for pets too. Like if you have any like um, animals for your SVG files, this is a great fur. <laughs> so for clothes, for that, I think it's a lot of fun. All right, so let me bring the Xyron machine over. And I have the nine by five, which um, I like because I just feel like you never know which size you're gonna use. And I don't wanna limit myself with it being so small. All right, so normally what people do is they stick in a piece of cardstock or um, a printed picture or something like that. And what they do is they they put it in face side up. So like, let's say this is a photo because this, this will, make it easier to understand. If it was a photo, or I'm gonna bring out this just to make it easier. So if I have this, the back is white, and if I wanna turn this into a sticker, I would put this sticker side up, and the back side is what gets the sticky piece on it, right? On this one, I actually want it to be the opposite. I want the sticky part to be on top because I'm adding the flock on top and that's what's gonna stay and sh actually sh uh, be shown. So I'm going to flip this over, have the back side facing up. So I'm gonna stick this all the way in and I'm gonna show you. So let's move it like this. You wanna stick it all the way to the edge, especially if you have any intricate pieces. Um, I would try to stick it in like that and then you're just gonna crank the little knob or whatever we call this. <laughs> and it's gonna come out the back. What you wanna make sure is that you can see the whole piece because your the blade comes down and it cuts off the piece for you. So there you have it. I'm gonna move this aside. Now you may ask, um, why I prefer using the Xyron machine for that. I like it because it's easy. Um, I'm gonna push this down to make sure that the stickiness is totally on that front side. You saw that I just stuck it in, cranked it. Um, the whole piece gets the stickiness, so it gets really good um, coverage. And like I said, it's easy. I don't use it a lot because Everything else, like I don't use it. I, I think back in the day before we had the Cricut, before we had a lot of materials available to us, I think turning something into a sticker, this was so much, e you know, it was easy to use. But now it's like, unless I'm doing cardstock, anything that I wanna turn into a sticker, I would have already used sticky paper, like, you know, sticker paper, or I don't know. I'm not really sure other than using it like this, this is what I use it for the most. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna take this off. Oh my gosh, I don't know what happened there. Well, I'm gonna rip this off because we don't need it. I just took off a layer somehow. Okay, I'm gonna pull this back. This part is sticky. Anywhere that didn't get tape on there is sticky, but, and it's not reusable. So just throw that away. 
Then on this, what I like to do is I'm going to flip it over like this. I actually don't really want to, I, I don't want to touch this. I want to avoid touching it as much as possible. I'm going to put it on this piece of paper because this is reusable. The flock is reusable. So I want to pour it down. Okay, there's. I'm going to open this up and like I said this is reusable so I want to put the paper down below so that I can easily just pick it up curl it and then you know dump it back in so I like using the spoon because I can push down and make sure that it's stuck to the sticky and that um, you know I won't have a lot of um, pieces flaking off so And you know, I just, I really like this method. It's a lot of fun. It really changes your cardstock. It gives you um, just more character to it. Um, I really like using it for pets. Like um, the last time I used it was, I did turning red, right? When she turns into the cat or whatever. And then I also did it for socks for uh, the new Buzz Lightyear movie, which is not so new anymore, but Buzz turned out to be like the cutest little cat thing. I loved it. All right, so here's the shoe. And I'm just going to tap it, get all the excess off. And some of these pieces are a little bit thicker. I'm just gonna do that with my nails. And so this just changes and gives you like some texture to it. In person, because I, I feel like on camera, it looks more spotty than it actually is in person. In person, it just looks like, like a suede type material. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it, it looks better in person because I'm looking at it on, um, on my screen and it looks really splotchy and that you wouldn't want it, but it actually looks like real suede where there's, you know, um, texture to it. And if I were to run my hand this way, it would turn the suede like over to the other um, color. But, all right, I'm gonna put this back in. And close that up. And we've got like one extra special part to it already. I'm gonna move this aside. Um, so I like having the Zyron machine. I will say it's, um, you know, I'll go back to it and use it. It's a lot easier than um, like when you're trying to cover a lot or you want to make sure that you have good coverage. It's a lot easier using that than it is to use something like the Tombow um, double sided adhesive. So there you have it. All right. I'm going to move this back over here and now let's work on the candle. So the candle, I know this is attached to here, which we need to tape together. But what we do know for sure is this is where the flame is gonna be. So I was testing this out and um, I'm not sure, okay, so here are my lights. These are lights from Amazon. This one is like a multicolor light and this one is just white light. So, Whenever I'm doing lights, what I've noticed is when you have, whoops, that's like really bright. So see that, that red dot? I don't know if I, I don't think I like that. I want it to be on its side, which is difficult right now, but I don't know if you can see the light in the camera. So there you can kind of, oh, there you can see the light right there. So what I want to do is I want to have this on the side. I don't want the light pointing up because I feel like it's too obvious that it's a light that way, but I like it like this. I also like the colored light. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, but what I was saying is whenever I use these lights, I like using vellum paper. The vellum paper kind of just, I don't know what it is, but it sort of spreads the light out. So let me show you what the colored lights look like. So you see how like the light gets, it, it, it's more of a flickering, I don't know, like it just glows a little bit more. So um, I like having a layer of the vellum on the outside. So what I did was, this is cardstock, and then I did an offset of the flame, 
and cut that in vellum so that it kind of spreads the light. So what I want to do, I think, is I want to cut out a little piece right here. The hard part is, could we do it like that? We could have the flame sticking totally up like that. We want to make sure that we have access to the little slit right here so that we can put the paper back in. When you put the paper back in, the light turns off. So we don't want the light to be going on all the time because at some point you're gonna lose, the light's no longer gonna work. So we wanna be able to pull out and stick in the piece. So I think what we wanna do is, I'm gonna see if I can find another colored light, the multicolored light, because I think that looks better. So let's see if we have another one. And I think what I wanna do is just hot glue it down. I don't know, is that crazy? Okay, so the, this bag is white. Let's test out a few of these. I somehow mixed these up in my... Okay, here we go. So this one is multi. This is one multi. This one's white. I mixed up my batch. So every time we got to just test it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to plug in my glue gun. I think what I'm going to do is just full on... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking out loud here. Let's put in our glue, let's heat up our glue gun and then we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, if we just flat on glue this, then kind of to the side like this, basically put them maybe like side by side like this and then we would get the light flickering all like throughout but we would also have, still have access to it to stick the little slit back in um the alternative was i was going to cut a hole and have it sit through here but if we cut the hole then we also have to cut the hole through the foam board so i'm thinking we just put this on top like this with the light just sitting really on top of it so what I'm going to do is this. I want to, let's put this down first and I'm going to trace that. I'm going to grab a pencil. Do, 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 do. Where are all my pencils? Okay, here we go. So that I know what the inside looks like. The inside piece is the thick orange cardstock, right? So I want to know that because the vellum, you could, you could see the white through it. So I want to know exactly my cardstock so that when I glue this down, that my, oh, see, this looks good. Maybe facing out that way and facing this way. You see? All right. And everything is within the piece. So I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. So let's wait for this to get hot. We're gonna glue it down. And what we can do here is, in the meantime, what can we do? We could work on this. Well, we can't work on it too much because this is attached and so this is gonna hang off. <laughs> so we don't want that gonna be like that and this isn't perfectly even so this file this dopey file um like the black is not all even as you can see and even the flame look at this this is not a perfect offset of this so it's a it's a fun funky challenging file but this what we can do is we could glue this down while we're waiting so I'm gonna get my barely art glue so I do recommend Barely Art Glue for cardstock because what you're gonna notice is it's not going to warp your paper. So, let's see. Oh, okay. So let's put this down. And I normally don't go in this order, so if this is the first time you're watching me, it's because I wanted to do the extras 
because I've done, I don't know, hundreds of these, right? So you've seen me do it. The process is always the same when, up to a certain point. Um, the process is you put your black pieces together, the black background, you tape it all down. Then you put all your colored pieces on top and you glue it down as you, um, you know, once you've pieced everything together. Um, we're not doing that because we're doing the specialty parts. And so I wanted to do that first because this can get tedious, but we're going to do this while we're waiting for the glue. And while we're waiting, also for anyone in Texas, Josie from Sophie's Crafts, Sophie's Corner. Um, we are co-hosting a workshop together and it's going to be in Texas this February, February 2023, live at the Barely Art Headquarters. Yes, the very same glue. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have three workshops to choose from. The first one is going to be 3D letters. We're going to do a set of four letters, XOXO. Um, Josie and I are splitting it up. You get my style, you get her style together, you get like from beginning to end. Um, the, ne the next workshop is um, cake toppers. We're doing one with the actual like clock mechanism so there's something spinning and then we're doing another cake topper where it's just so many layers but clean and just to give you um, you know, again, two examples of the same theme, but just different. And then the last one is an off the mat character and it's actually behind me, I think, but you can see it's the barely art bear. We are, I mean, it is a class, a standalone class. So we're doing just the off the mat. But when I say just, this one's got everything. It's got rolled flowers. It's got a mini cake topper, basically. So you're getting everything in there and it's a tricky file. So it's a good one to do in person. It's a good one to do on Zoom. It's a good one to learn from, basically. So we have our in-person Texas classes. And if you can't make that the weekend of, um, Valentine's Day, then the weekend before, the first weekend in February are our Zoom classes. And of course, that's open to anywhere. Anywhere that you can get on Zoom, we've got you covered. So you could just go to the uselesscrafter.com to check out the tickets, the workshop, and all the information. So anyway, I think our glue is ready. So I'm going to close up my glue, this one for now. And we are going to glue down our pieces. So, um, I'm just gonna put a blob down. And let it sink in, and then another blob over here. And we can always add more glue, but this will get it to kind of at least stick a little bit so we can see uh oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this out for now. So we can kind of see it. So it's gonna sit like this. Oops, no, it's gonna sit like this. And you see how the light, I love it. So we're gonna put these two together. So let's glue these two together now. And I wonder if we want to put, no, I'm going to make this flat because we already have so much height there from the lights. I'm just going to put this flat down. And then on here, I'm actually going to put I don't want this going anywhere. I want to make sure it's hard. Ah, I love it. Okay, so our glue is down. I mean, our candle, our flame is down. Um, these two pieces I'm gonna take off, but here's our little candle. Oh my gosh. 
I love it. Okay, so now let's put this back in. Let's make sure that we can. Okay, so that lights out. Let me flip this over. That lights, yay! So the lights are out, and you can kind of see if that's what it looks like. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna turn off the glue, I'm gonna move it to the side. Let's work on this piece right here. So, starting from the beginning, <laughs> I'm gonna move these pieces over. We did all the crazy pieces. And I'm gonna leave just the black. So, You know what this color might be too pale for dopey so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna glue him but it's super easy to cut out in an, a darker shade and just see if that one works better I think this color is almost too pale for him so I'm gonna put this aside but we can always just stick it on top and it's just gonna look like a layered piece so all right what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this because I know it goes like this and because we already have the lights in, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to work on this. So I'm gonna move it like this. I'm gonna hold it up against each other like that and tape it down. You wanna make sure that it's pressed up against each other so that the seams aren't like glaring. And then we're gonna tape this down. And then once I tape it down, I'm gonna go back and I wanna tape around the edges because this part is probably gonna be covered by something. This at the edge is where we're gonna see the seams and I wanna make sure that the light, like it doesn't bend so that the light doesn't catch the, the seam. So we wanna make sure that it is as flat as possible. I'm gonna run a piece of tape right up to the edge. Same thing on this side. But I also don't want my tape to go past here because as you can see on the screen, scotch tape is clear, but it's very visible against the black. So we don't wanna see it on the other side. All right, so I'm flipping this over here. Everything gets flipped this way, okay? This gets flipped this way because we're taping from behind. and. The reason why we're taping from behind is exactly that. The tape you can see, so we wanna tape from behind so that you can't see the scotch tape. So I'm gonna do a pe you know, two pieces at a time. I'm gonna lift this up, push it against that one, and then tape it down. these two pieces then I'm going to put these two sets together right Line them up. Line these two up. All right, so we've got, let's see, we've got this little piece down here, like so. And then we've got this long piece down here. I'm just gonna slide up. And 
and this back side is going to be glued down to a foam board. So we're not really worried about what it looks like. Okay, we've got just two more pieces up here. Let's do these two pieces together. Get those like this, right? Did I flip these? All right, let me look at the image real quick. Because <laughs> now I can't remember if I flipped it or not. Let's see. Oh yeah, I do want it this way. Okay, so let's glue or tape these two pieces together and then we'll tape this set to this. We've got Dopey. It looks all good. I'm going to just put this, I'm going to take one more piece at the edge right here. Okay, we're going to flip him over. And now let's add our pieces. So we've got a hat up here. So this right here, there's a seam running right through here. What I'm going to do is go back into design space and I'm going to cut a black piece to fit this. So what I would do is I would take the piece, the, the, the top, right? I'm going to grab this piece, hit contour, and then I'm actually going to hide this piece so only the circle is left. And then I'm going to cut that piece in black and actually put a full black piece in. When I do that, this seam will just disappear. And then what goes in here is the little button. So this will go in here. The seam now is reduced to here and here, but it, it, that's going to be gone because the black piece will be there. So I hope that makes sense to you. That's kind of the one of the things that you want to look at in the face is are there any seams coming through? Because we can do the same thing for inside the face. But there are no seams in the face, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's see. And then we have our, this little piece is so cute. The little patch with the um, texture on it. Okay, this is up here. This is the arm. So you see how the pieces are like, they're very uneven. So it's gonna feel like we're slightly off, but we're actually not. And I may even change out the pink. I know the light is really bright, but it's looking very, very pale right there. So we can always just know we can easily recut because when you recut, it's gonna cut exactly that size. We just plop it on top and you'll never see the bottom.
Now the other thing is it may you are you may be tempted to glue pieces as you put them down but as you can see like we're going to make lots of little adjustments so it's best to lay out all your pieces and then glue at the end just to make sure that you're good with oh i knew there was a little piece of purple hold on let me grab that okay this silver thing so random that there's a little piece of purple down here. I don't know what to make of that. Because, <laughs> oh, is it the tail of the hat? I'm like, how does it get all the way down there? I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> all right, let's look at this. Um, here's our little piece. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. Here are his shoes, which I think are just adorable. All right, oh, so everything is down except for his hand, which if you give me a second, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, we'll piece this together right now, but I'm gonna slide under it a, um, the foam board so that I can easily move the, the whole piece. Um, let's see. All right, we got him all, look at that. Okay, so now is the time to make little adjustments before you glue it down. And as you glue it down, you're just gonna glue piece by piece. So this all shifted as I moved it, so hold on. Oh my gosh, everything shifted. What in the world? How does this hand go? Let's see. There we go. That looks really weird. So you see how like just little adjustments will make a difference in how you, how the black is perceived. So you just wanna make sure that you line it up the way you want to. This piece feels off to me. So. that look better? I think that looks better. And then, yep, I think that looks good. So we'll put this up here a little bit. And you can make adjustments based on how you cut it. So I have a, a, a seam right here. I'm gonna move this down just a little bit because I feel like I, there's room. We can do that. We can make minor adjustments here like that. And that's gonna look good. There we go. Yay! So all you do now is you're gonna glue it together. I'm gonna glue it I'm going to come back and in a separate tutorial, 
we're going to cut the black foam board. And the reason why I want to bring you back for that is that um, we are going to need to, let's see, this part is really thin, so we're going to need to reinforce that. I think the way it is is actually pretty good. So, yeah, that flame is a little bit thin right here, and we've got the lights on there. So we want to make sure that that part right there is very um, stable. So, all right, I hope that was helpful. What I would do with this part, and you've seen it a million times, but just to make sure, is I always start in the middle to glue this down. I'm gonna glue this piece, probably this piece first or this piece. If I glue this piece first, what I would do is, because it's so big and because my cardstock is not flimsy um, or delicate, I wanna say, I can add, I can flip this up, add glue right here and glue this down. So now this is in place. Then I'll lift this up and glue this in place. The reason why I want you to start in the middle is that things are gonna shift, like just because, you know, because they're not down, you're gonna accidentally touch it, whatever. So if you do it in the middle, if you make a mistake or if things shift, um, we can still realign everything and basically sort of um, kind of shift the mistake, right? So instead of it, like if it's a little bit off like this, we can kind of readjust everything, like maybe we can readjust this piece over a little bit, right? Then it won't look so weird. It won't look like this with, oops, we won't keep this in place and then leave that, right? We're gonna just readjust everything a little bit. So we're going to kind of basically divide up that mistake and spread it out. And so that allows us, it's a lot easier to do it when we go from middle and out because we have more room to spread it out. We have other areas. If you start from, let's say the bottom and go up, well, if you make a mistake down here, everything has to shift up, right? But if you make a mistake in the middle, we kind of shift it all over and you won't be able to really notice it in the whole, um, in the whole piece. So, all right. I will see you back for the foam board, but I can't wait for this. This is gonna be so cute and I can't wait for the light. And I'm also going to cut the other options so that you can kind of see the colors, okay? All right, see you in a little bit. Comments and questions, please post them below. All right. <laughs>